Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for joining us. Today we are in Indiana once again. We're halfway between Chicago and Indianapolis. We are at the Monticello Fire Department and let's go take a look what they got. We're going to take you in through the visitor's entrance here. This building would broke ground in 2016. It took them about a year or so to get in here, but they set it up really nice. Coming in through the foyer area here, uh, they got a lot of cool things. First thing I noticed right away is the front of this engine thing here. This goes up to their receptionist that she's out for lunch right now. But these lights all light up and everything like that. It's pretty cool to see that. The other thing is they have a monument to the 9-11 memorial. They went up and got a piece of steel from that. It's very cool. You know, we're in the Midwest right now. They were able to uh, maybe have a guy go up there or something like that. But uh, having a piece of steel across the nation from what happened in that tragedy, that's awesome to have great thing to do. Down this foyer area here, they have uh, a bunch of memorabilia, you know, some fire trucks. Obviously, they're gonna have some of their history here. They got some of their uh, books, all their old call logs, a lot of radio systems. Right here though, they have a fire pole. This isn't functioning, but as you walk in, you immediately get the feel. Even though it's a new building built in 2016, they wanted to make it feel like an old firehouse. So putting an old pole in here gives you that feeling as a visitor coming right in. Right off the foyer here, we're gonna go into their training room. This is a state-of-the-art training room. One thing that I'll show you later is out back, they do some of the Fire 1, Fire 2 classes. And in order to do that, they needed a space. So in this space, they have plenty of seats for everybody. They have state-of-the-art technology with all the videos and uh, PowerPoints and things like that. Great lighting in here. It feels nice and warm. It's got a little kitchen sink in the back for refreshments. Set up very, very nicely. It's very warm and inviting. I definitely can do class in here. So, all right, we're gonna continue on, working our way down the hallway here. We're gonna make an immediate right if I go to my left, we're gonna go out to the apparatus bay. We'll go see those in a little bit. They have a ton of trucks. That apparatus bay is huge. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Coming through this door, we're making our way into the administrative hall. Right to my right here is their billing slash QA person. She organizes all the paperwork, makes sure everything's done, the signature there, then they send it out to a third party to do the billing. You need a nice strong person to do that. Uh, you need an area for that and they set this up awesome. As I work my way down the hall here, we're going to run into uh, the captain's office, chief office, and deputy chief's office. We have to remember that having a strong administrative department is going to be key for any department. You know, they worry about health and fitness of the providers. They make sure their equipments are good, you know, and what they do here, they allow them to kind of relax as if they were at home. They're able to bring some of their pets while they're here at work. They have a restoration project that we're going to talk about in a little bit out in the engine bay. Those kind of things are very important to have a strong administrative buy into that. Not just for the buildings, but for the mental health of your providers and the physical health. We'll continue on into the kitchen and see what they have in there. Walking out of the administrative hallway here, we're walking into their living area. This is their kitchen and their dining room area. I really enjoy seeing these kind of tables. We've seen these over and over again. This is another table that was made by one of their members. They took a lot of their stickers. They actually had to go out and get the wood and build this. This one's cool because it has fire hydrants underneath. It has the ladder, uh, but this was so big because of the personnel that they have here, it started to bow a little bit. So they put a jack under there. The thing is, you don't know that that was something added later, but looking at this table, you, we sit around, we talk around, eat everything around this table. Awesome thing to have. This kitchen is huge too. They wanted to make sure when they built this building that it has enough room for all their providers. You know, they eat maybe breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. So having industrial size appliances, two dishwashers, you have your A, B, and C platoon refrigerators, and a good prep area, it was very, very important. Off of this area from their uh, dining room and their kitchen, we're gonna walk into their lounge or their living room area. This is also a trend that I've been seeing is they put it up as a stadium kind of seating. So as I'm in the front here, I can sit down, watch the big screen TV, but in the back, I can still see. I don't have to worry about the guys in front of me getting in our way. It's very warm, inviting. It has some memorabilia up on the wall, their logos. Uh, this is an awesome place to relax. Everybody gets their own recliner to sit down in between those calls. Coming out of the day room area, back into their kitchen, I'm gonna let you guys know that they run about 3,200 calls a year. They're doing uh, just under 540 square miles worth of coverage area. 
So even though that's not a whole big volume of calls, they cover a big area. When they're not doing calls, they're actually helping the community as much as possible. They go out and do fire prevention. Their doors seem to be always open anytime people drive by. One of the things that I noticed here in the uh, dining room area is they have all these murals up on the ceiling or the ceiling tiles. And those were done by the local elementary school. Just a little touch of home and community brought into a firehouse. That's pretty cool to see. I haven't yet seen that in any other firehouse. That just tells me that these guys are really involved in their community. Not only that, the placement of this building is important. They're right next to the hospital here. It's an acute care hospital, so they have you know quick access. Now we're kind of headed back into the administrative side of the building, but we're gonna make a quick right here and walk into their squad room area. This is where a lot of the work is actually being done. They have two little charting rooms here. They're nice and quiet and isolated, so you can focus on your charts, make sure they're accurate. Down here is where the radios are. A lot of their shift assignments and things like that are in here, so awesome little, little nook. You got a big bulletin board here, so all the information that you need to relay from shift to shift or when coronavirus was coming about, uh, putting it up on the board is very important. Communication for any firehouse is important. So having a nice radio room or squad room like this is great. Got a nice big table here to uh, get organized, make sure things are okay, make sure your trucks are have all their equipment on it, is awesome to have. Behind me, they are doing what most firehouses I think should do. They have these patched boards, uh, you know, so if you're interested in sharing patches, let them know. If you wanna send one over to them, they'd be happy to put it up on the board for it. So they got three of them right here and I'm sure they're building more. In the back corner here is the Lieutenant's office. In this office, you know, I walk into it and you feel like this is actual a firehouse office. You know, it's not your typical nine to five banker, but you have everything on the wall. You have old ladders, you have a lot of pictures. It's open to their crew room. I love that it's accessible. The Lieutenant is right here with their guys, part of the crew. This would be a great place to sit down, study, take care of the crew and uh, get the job done. After we come out of the uh, Lieutenant's office, back in the crew room, we're gonna start hitting the apparatus bay or, well, you know what? We're gonna go upstairs. Coming up the stairs, I look behind me and what they did is bring some of the old stuff from their old building. The building used to be in town. They kind of moved it away a little bit uh, for easier access. It had more land out here. They're sitting on about five acres, but you know, they don't want to lose their history. So bringing an old door, some of the old equipment, that's pretty cool to have. This is actually coming up into their dorm area. They have 10 separate dorms and then two suites for their captain and lieutenant. These are set up very similar to some of the other ones that you've seen. They have plenty of restrooms up here and showers. So, you know, the one thing that's concerning about many of the firehouses is you have men and, and women uh, involved in the fire service, and you want to make sure that they have the privacy that they need, but also the showers and the equipment that they need. By putting it up on a second floor away from the apparatus bay, you are complying with those warm and cold zones. So none of the apparatus uh, exhaust comes up here. It's all separate. Again, it goes into that health and safety of their providers. The other thing is that here, unlike some of the other stations where they had separate tones for the ladder, the truck, or the rescue, this is all the same. The reason they did that is because they are both firemen and paramedics together for all their paid guys. They have some EMTs on board, they have some part-timers, but you know, they didn't need to separate or spend the money for those kind of systems to separate the tones because they're all going on the same cause. They back each other up when they need it. The ambulance may go out, but if it's a cardiac arrest, the engine or the rescue is gonna go behind them and help them out. So having one tone is important. They do have the lights that come on uh, that are you know, the low lights and kind of work their way up for that health and safety that we mentioned in other videos. So it's very clean, very organized, and what's nice about this is no matter what side of the building you're on, you can make your way down the stairs or right here in the center, you can make your way out into the mezzanine and see the uh, fire pole that goes down. Before we take you back downstairs to the apparatus bay or even out to the mezzanine, I'm gonna actually take you into the weight room. This again is an awesome thing to have for a fire station or EMS station. It's very important for that physical fitness and mental fitness. So after you get back from a uh, stressful call, you can come up here, get on the treadmill, work off some of that energy, stay fit, stay healthy. You know, when you're thinking about building fire stations, it's important to think of those mental health and physical health and making a, a weight room like this that has everything. You got a stair stepper, your treadmills, your free weights, your dumbbells, your bench press, 
is all very important to keep fit. Many of the firehouses are now starting to write it into their SOGs that at some point during their day or during their uh, rotation, they have to get some kind of workout. What an excellent way to make sure that your guys are staying healthy. Putting it into their job description is very important. We're now making our way out onto the mezzanine. This mezzanine was designed for quick access down to the apparatus bay with their fire pole. You can get to it from all the dorm rooms pretty easily. You know, it is also designed for a lot of the storage. So your cabinets that have all your all calls, all the paperwork that you need for your certifications are all up here. But they said, you know what? This is a great space to be a multi-purpose area. You have a ping pong table here to play with. You have a, the old table from their old firehouse to talk with. One of the concerns that you have when you have a building that's this large is you start to separate your fire guys. They run a crew of minimum of six, a lot of times eight guys during a daytime, and you can actually get lost in this building because it's so large. So they were very purposeful on creating spaces such as this in order to bring that camaraderie back to the firehouse. They didn't want to lose that. The other thing that they've done up here is actually designed it so they can do some training. Right above us here, all the way up to the ceiling, they have some ropes for some repelling or some rescues that they can do. And the funny thing is, over here in this little sitting area, underneath this carpet, I'll show you in a little bit, uh, from the bottom side, they have a hole access here. So if you need to go and do below grade uh, rescues or something like that, they have the ability to do that. I'll show you that in just a little bit. But once again, this mezzanine is out in the fire engine bay. Uh, or engine bay where you can see all your apparatus, the doors are open, the wind is coming through, it's very comfortable up here, you got quick access to all your equipment and uh, it's pretty cool to have. Let's go downstairs and take a look at some of their fire trucks. Now I'm coming off the stairs from the second floor, this is the sister side or front of the building versus the back of the building where I came up. Right here above my head is that access panel that I talked about where they can do below grade rescues and, and things from that off that mezzanine. The other thing that they thought about when they built this building was making sure that they had enough restrooms all over the place. Right to my right here is actually a full shower and bathroom also. This came in very handy when it was COVID time. So if they came back from a call and they needed to decon of stuff, having a bathroom right off an engine bay or an apparatus bay was very important. They were able to derobe. De uh, they had a rack here to put on their new set of clothes, get cleaned up and get ready for the next call. Very cool to have. Now we're going to make our way out into the apparatus bay and we'll talk about some of these trucks. Walking out into the apparatus bay, one is missing. This is their newest one in their fleet. This is an F-450 medic unit. Over to my right here is going to be one of their freight liners. This one's one of their backup trucks. And then I have one more ambulance here. This is an E-450. That All of these are set up as ALS trucks. To my right, this is a pretty unique vehicle. This one is actually designed for UPS that they converted into a water rescue. They do dive, cold water, and swift water rescues out of this truck. The next apparatus I want to talk about is one of their reserve pieces. This is a 2000 Pierce. It's got a 1250 GPM with 1,000 gallons of water on it. The next apparatus here to my left is going to be an E1 Heavy Rescue. This is set up really nice. First of all, it does have a pump and it has water. It has 400 gallons of water with a 250 gallon per minute pump. They have started converting over to some of the electric uh, rescue tools. These are really cool to use because they're easy to deploy. They're relatively lightweight, but you don't have to worry about the hydraulics. However, because it is a rescue, it's classified as a heavy rescue, and they use it as an ALS uh, third out kind of vehicle, they have all the stuff that you need, including the old style rescue tools right up front. They're all pre-connected hearse tools, so this vehicle gets used quite a bit. Right next to the Heavy Rescue is their new engine, Engine 3. This is a 2021 E1. It's got 1,000 gallons of water and a 1,500 gallon per minute pump. But what's nice about this is they did a side mount pump. That way they can kind of lower the truck a little bit and it gave them room to put a tailboard on this. You know, back in the days, tailboards were a big thing, but they started getting away from it and it was very hard to get up and get to the hoses. But by putting a net tailboard on it, they're not riding it to the call, but it makes it easier to get the Minuteman lay. So they can just put it over their shoulder, pull it out. They got 200, pre, 200 foot of pre-connected. Awesome way to do that. I love the fact that they're bringing back some of the tailboards. Behind their engine three is their tanker. This is a 2005 S&S. It's got 2,000 gallons of water and it has a 750 gallon per minute pump. So it can be classified as another engine if it needs to. Right next to engine three is engine two. This is a 2010 E1. It has a thousand gallons of water and a 1500 gallon per minute pump. 
Right next to engine two is going to be their truck 21. They did that in remembrance of one of their old fire chiefs. This is a E1. It is a 2008. It has 500 gallons of water with a 2,000 gallon per minute pump. We have two more pieces of apparatus in this engine bay. You have a John boat here used for their water rescues. What's nice about this is up front they have a uh, platform that folds out that they can die from. This gets pulled by their squad here. This is an F550. It pulls that, but it's also used as a brush truck. The final area on the end of the apparatus bay here is the, kind of their storage area. They store a lot of their props for their training tower out back, uh, but they're also doing a restoration project. This is a 1930 Boer chemical wagon. At the end of the apparatus bay is their gear room. It's separate, so it meets those NFPA regulations of having that hot, warm, and cold zone. Now you may be thinking, why is it all the way at the end? Well, they have two sets of gear. So if the guys are on the truck, they're gonna pull their gear out in the beginning of shift and they're gonna put them with the truck. If they get contaminated or they get a big fire, they can put it in the gear washer, get it taken care of, grab their next set of gear. They wanna keep it separate, that way all those carcinogens are away from the, the areas that they're gonna be. Coming up to the last room here is gonna be their mechanics room before I take you outside and show you where their training area is. I'll take you in here real quick and let you know that, you know, this is an area that they help take care of all their equipment. They take care of their air packs, their cylinders. Uh, they have a cascade room back here, all the oils and, and lubricants that you need. So everything's ready to go at a moment's notice. On the back side of the firehouse, they have a pretty unique thing here. They have a training tower. They are part of a fire district that has three of these. So they are able to teach fire one and fire two right on their fire grounds. They have nine counties that are involved in this fire district that can come here and use this facility anytime they need to. I want to thank Access, which is the architectural firm that helped design this beautiful station. They had safety in mind when they decided to build this. I also want to thank the chief and the captain who walked us around at Monticello Fire Department. They did a fantastic job here. Once again, this is Heroes Next Door doing a station cribs. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification so we can keep bringing you more. Remember, we're trying to get that 50,000 mark with you guys' help.